ിറ്റി <laughs> organized by the PG Department of Commerce and IPC of R Shankar Memorial SNDP Yogam College Kollayattu in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council first of all i would like to welcome the resource person of the day dr jadong kang assistant professor at rajagiri business school kochi dr kang also serves as the regional expert of the korea trade investment promotion agency and is a consultant for the international labor organization through the collaboration with various agencies he pursues the practical application of economics theories for partnership between india and south korea dr kang coordinates various programs in association with korean partner universities governmental agencies and international organizations his research interests include geopolitical cooperation and socio economical engagement between india and south korea dr kang has authored many research articles in various reputed national and international journals today he will be handling a session on trade investment and partnership between india and south korea current issues and the way forward i hope this webinar will provide a clear understanding of current challenges and future opportunities in the economic collaboration between india and south korea on behalf of the post graduate department of commerce i extend a very warm welcome to you sir next i extend a warm welcome to our esteemed principal dr sujay cp whose unwavering support and encouragement have been the guiding force behind all our endeavors welcome sir this webinar session will be chaired by the head of the pg department of commerce dr shachi maram betel i extend a very warm welcome to you sir i also welcome dr bhavya b coordinator of this webinar series and shrimati chantini pm coordinator of the internal quality assurance cell to this program a very warm welcome to all the faculties of our college other colleges and to my dear students to this webinar for your active participation and deliberations once again i extend a very warm welcome to one and all thank you over to adria ഭവ്യ and uh, my colleagues uh, teachers from other colleges and uh, participants dear participants and uh, we all as we all know today is the 11th technical session of the gurumajan webinar series hosted by uh, r sangam memorial sndt yogam college kailandi uh, uh, today's technical session is hosted by the postgraduate department of commerce and uh, the topic of today's technical session is trade investment and partnership between india and south korea current issues and the way forward today we are going to talk about how trading with other countries is really important for everyone 
and we will focus on how India and South Korea can work together to make things better. As we embark on this intellectual journey, it is imperative to recognize the indispensable role of foreign trade in the contemporary world. In an era marked by interconnectedness and interdependence, nations must actively engage in international trade to not only bolster their economies but also to foster mutual understanding and collaboration. Trade has proven to be a powerful catalyst for economic growth, trade creation and technological advancements. India and South Korea have a long-standing relationship when it comes to trade and investment. Both countries have been collaborating to bolster each other's economies and reap the benefits of globalization. However, there are still looming challenges and the pressing issues that hinder the progress of this partnership. We are lucky to have Dr. Jadong Kang here with us as a resource person for today. He is an assistant professor at Rajagiri Business School, Kachi, and an expert from the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, Kotra. We believe that this platform will be a great opportunity for us to learn understand and discuss the issues, challenges and opportunities for India, South Korea, trade and investment. Dr. Kang's expertise and insight will surely contribute to enriching our knowledge on the current situation of trade and investment between the two countries and provide us with the way forward to addressing the issues and challenges. Once again, I welcome you all to this webinar and I hope that this session will be a productive and a fruitful one for all of us. Without further ado, let us warmly welcome Dr. Jadong Kang to share his expertise and illuminate the path toward enhanced collaboration and mutual prosperity. Over to you, Dr. Kang. Thank you. Sir, sir, you are in mute. Mute, sir, please yes, sir. unmute, sir. Yes, sir. So thank you. Oh, no, so sorry, much. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, prestigious uh, webinar uh, series. Uh, so I'm very happy to uh, talk about the trade investment and partnership between India and South Korea. And uh, before beginning my session, I uh, uh, I'm thankful to the uh, principal of the college, Dr. Uh, Sujesh. CP and uh, head of the Department of Commerce, Dr. Shaji Maran Bittil. So, and the teachers and the scholars and the students, uh, the good evening to all. So, let me uh, share my PPT uh, in this session. Just a moment. So, uh, can you see my PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, so, the title of my uh, presentation is Trade, Investment, and Partnership between India and South Korea, Current Issues, and the Way Forward. Uh, when uh, the youth or young generation know about Korea, the K dramas are very popular to uh, the young people. So maybe some of the students uh, may watch the crash landing on you, and it's okay to not be okay. And uh, recently, the skid game was very popular globally. So I hope some of the students may uh, watch one of them. Not only K dramas, but K pops. Uh, are uh, very popular in the world, like BTS uh, gained huge popularity. And a few years ago, the Sai Gangnam Style uh, was uh, one of the most favorite uh, K-pop songs. 
And we often uh, have the traditional Korean singers in uh, India. So a few years ago, music group Namu performed in Kochi. So uh, these are the well known in terms of Korea. However, uh, today's topic is not about culture, but uh, trade, investment, and partnership. So let me start with the evolution of economic relations between India and South Korea. In 1973, uh, the India and South Korea had the ambassadorial relations established. Some of you may know uh, the South Korea and North Korea. So we have uh, two Koreans. And uh, since 1973, uh, we, uh, India and South Korea, didn't have so much relations. So it, it, it is called the limited relations. But in 1991, uh, India started economic reform. And in 1993, India Prime Minister uh, visited South Korea. So do these two countries developed co comprehensive relations. And in 2010, we uh, established the free trade agreement, so-called SEPA. The full form of SEPA is the India-Korea Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement established. So since 2010, India and South Korea uh, uh, start to uh, develop more strategically close relations. Uh, to uh, show the briefly uh, uh, the uh, trade volume of two countries, uh, so as you know, overall it increased, uh, uh, but uh, it does not increase as much as we expect. So I explain why uh, trade volume uh, does not increase as expected. So objectives of this webinar uh, are as follows. I want to explain uh, the uh, linkage mechanisms between trade investment and partnership and analyze the patterns of South Korea's FDI in India. And also, uh, this, webin uh, this presentation will study the causal relationship between South Korea's FDI and its exports to India. To understand the trade between the two countries, we should uh, study on the FDI. And also, to know more possibility of collaboration, I will bring one successful cases of cooperation between Indian engineers and South Korean firms. So this is the case study. Now, uh, please see the uh, figure 1.1. Uh, this uh, shows why India and South Korea interact with each other in terms of uh, trade and FDI. The uh, emerging uh, economies, uh, let's say India, may provide global sourcing outcomes like labor or natural resources. And uh, advanced economies, uh, let's say South Korea, uh, give, uh, also uh, give foreign direct investment to India. So in this way, these two uh, economies interact with each other and pursue uh, the win and win uh, benefits. Now, uh, let me start with the linkage mechanisms between India and South Korea. So during the Cold War, the two countries uh, had a little association due to geographical distance and ideological orientations. India uh, had a uh, close relationship with the Soviet Union uh, during the Cold War, and South Korea had a close relationship with the US. But in 1993, India's then Prime Minister P.B. Narasimha uh, Rao visited South Korea and uh, wanted to have close bilateral relations. So uh, let me brief uh, the history of a collaboration between India and South Korea. In uh, 1948, uh, Mr. K.P.S. Menon from India was appointed as the chairman of the nine member of the UN Temporary Commission on Korea. So 
uh, at that time, uh, this KPS Menon uh, actually supervised the general election in Korea. So, and uh, very uh, happily to say, the KPS Menon was a Catalan. In 1950 to 1953, uh, Korea uh, went through civil war. At that time, India dis uh, deployed, de deployed an army medical unit to South Korea. However, this uh, close relationship didn't continue during the Cold War. However, the Prime Minister P. D. Narasimha Rao visited South Korea in 1993 and the economic collaboration between two uh, countries started to bloom. The main topic of the Rao team summit was India, South Korea's businesses and the trade cooperation. So this is the beginning of economic cooperation between these two countries. Now, when we see what makes two countries collaborate uh, with each other, there are uh, uh, multiple factors. One is geographical factors. Uh, by setting up uh, their production units in India, Korean firms can produce products at comparative prices and export them to third countries. Uh, for example, Hyundai Motors in Chennai produce their automobiles and uh, export them to the neighboring countries. And India and South Korea have comparative advantages. India has a low labor cost, uh, enjoy low labor costs, and they have a huge reservoir of technically qualified people. So South Korea uh, need them and also provide some uh, the, the high level technology and training for the uh, labor India labels. There are common interests. And the fourth factor is the social cultural factors. So uh, there are uh, uh, cultural exchanges between India and South Korea, like uh, Korean language uh, courses established in JNU, and uh, also Hindi language is taught in Korean university. So we have uh, some uh, social cultural exchanges. And to understand India and South Korea's uh, the linkage, uh, I have brought the linkage mechanisms. Though India and South Korea are distant geographically, these two countries can uh, link through trade agreements, investment flows, and partnership flows. So trade agreements uh, are the mediator and means to achieve cooperation among nations in the system. So let me talk about the trade agreements between India and South Korea. So on August 12, 1974, two countries signed an agreement on trade promotion and economic cooperation. So it's the beginning of the trade, uh, the uh, active trade between the two countries. And in 1996, again, two countries signed investment promotion and protection agreement. And in 2010, the India-Korea Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement came into effect. So this SEPA is the free trade agreement. Under the SEPA, there are, uh, uh, there are a few measurements for trade and investment were adopted. One is concession of tariffs. When two countries export and import their products and services, there comes concession of tariffs. Also, the SEPA operates FDI of Korea into India. So after the SEPA, many uh, Korean companies started to set up their factories in Indian soil. Also, the SEPA initiated economic cooperation between these two countries. And let me talk about investment flows. 
through establishing the free trade uh, agreement, many Korean companies set their factories in India. So you may know Hyundai Motors, Samsung Electronics, LG, Kia Motors uh, recently entered Indian Seoul, and Costco produced steels. And uh, some of you may enjoy the chocolate pie made by Lotte. So these are the representative Korean firms who uh, uh, did FDR in India. Not only these big companies, but also many SMEs entered into India as uh, investors. And uh, uh, the, the diagram shows the trend of South Korea's FDR inflows during 1980 and 2022. So since 1990, the FDI grows uh, and uh, yes, it obviously fluctuates, but overall the FDI grows. So the two countries expect the FDI continue to grow more rapidly. And uh, are not uh, only economic uh, partnership but also the partnership flows grow uh, between the two countries. So uh, as I already mentioned, Korean language is taught in the Indian universities, K-pop and K-drama gain popularity among youth, and uh, India's uh, food and uh, India's technology were also uh, learned by Korean uh, engineers. So let me uh, talk a little more about the partnership flows between India and South Korea. Because uh, India uh, invites many Korean companies into India, uh, Korean companies not only uh, do economic activities, but they also do uh, uh, sustainable, uh, uh, contribute to sustainable development. So there are three categories how Korean companies contribute to Indian sustainable development. One is business innovation. Through business innovation, Korean companies contribute to Indian sustainable development. Second, CSR activities of Korean firms contribute. Third, ODA. First, business innovation. For example, uh, one uh, example I brought is Samsung service vans. So the main motto of Samsung India is we will take care of you wherever you are. As you know, India is the vast country and uh, many people in rural area cannot, uh, do not have access to the service center. That's why Samsung India uh, operates customer service initiatives uh, for customers across India. So in the picture, you can see that's a van with all the uh, facilities. So the engineers uh, visited the customers in the rural area and give service to its own products. So this kind of product innovation uh, gives more sustainable you know, contribution to Indian society. Also, I want to mention the CSR corporate social responsibility of Korean firms. Uh, Hyundai Motor India uh, has been successful in the automobile industry. It uh, designed an eco-friendly income generating CSR program. For example, uh, it plants trees around the uh, Hyundai factory and uh, try to offset about 20,000 tons of carbon. So the picture shows uh, the people are uh, seedling the trees and uh, after growing it, that make the uh, uh, land around the factory green. And there is another Korean company, Serajam India. So basically, this company 
is a plant dream school project. So in the rural area, some schools do not have a proper IT, uh, IT labs. So the Sarajan India visited the rural school and established a uh, well-equipped well lab. So Sarajan is aiming for 100 dreaming schools and preparing to complete the construction of 10 dream schools in Mumbai in February 2023. So there are a uh, list of dream schools where the Sarajan established IT labs in the rural Schools. And the third company I would like to mention is POSCO. POSCO is a steel company, and um, this company visits rural areas and uh, uh, do some uh, medical services for the uh, people who are suffering from cataracts. So the, the POSCO send the medical staff to the rural area and gave operation to the IDGs. Yeah, so, and also Korean government has much interest in contributing to Indian social development. Uh, and one example is this, but I will uh, skip it this. Right. So, uh, now I, I want to more talk about the relationship between FDI and export. In the beginning of the presentation, uh, you saw the trade volume didn't grow as much as uh, two countries expected. It's because there were imbalance between India and Korea. Again, there is trade imbalance between India and South Korea. Please uh, see the uh, graph on the right. The blue line shows the Korea's exports to India. So since 2000, it grows steadily. Whereas the orange, orange uh, line shows the Korea's imports from India. So uh, although Korea's exports to India grew rapidly, but the Korea's imports from India didn't grow as expected. So the gray line shows trade deficit of India. Because of this trade deficit, the Indian government uh, does not want to open its uh, trade, uh, its door, its economy to South Korea uh, further. So this trade imbalance is a big uh, the problem between uh, India and Korea. So my study uh, sees the more South Korea's FDI comes to India, to the more South Korea's exports to India grow. Now, to understand the FDI, we, I mapped the year to the entry of big companies uh, of Korea. So, Dale Motors entered in 1994, Hyundai Motors 1996, and Postco. Uh, in this way, the Korean FDI entered. Now, when we see the entry of the Korean companies, as you can see, uh, the number of new large companies are 15.5% for the world and 9% for China. The ratio of large companies in India is high in comparison to those of the world and China. It means large Korean companies uh, do its FDI in India. And there are few SMEs. Uh, who are investing in India. So this is uh, some weakness of Korean FDI in India. Also, the left side graph shows which sector is a major investor. And most of FDI in India is from manufacturing. You, you may already know 
the Hyundai Motors and the Samsung Electronics, LG Electronics are all under manufacturing sector. So major portion of Korean FBI comes from manufacturing sector. So this is also imbalance. So I check, uh, is there causal relationship between South Korea exports to India and its FBI to India? So as you see, uh, uh, the right side, you, you can see the, this data of uh, two variables. One is South Korea export and its FDI. And I used the Granger causality. And I found there is unique directional causality from South Korea's FDI to South Korea's exports in the context of India. So it means when Korean companies set their factories in India, the more, uh, uh, the more uh, imports will come from South Korea. So the FDI actually causes more exports from Korea. So my uh, policy suggestion is South Korea must interlink exporting strategies and FDI strategies rather than separating them too. And the Indian government also try to mitigate the imports of Korean exports. But when uh, Indian uh, government put high tariffs on Korean imports, that may impact on the Korean FDI. So uh, Indian government should be very careful to impose high tariffs on Korean imports. That's my suggestion. And uh, before moving on, uh, can I uh, show one uh, video? Is it okay? I want to show how the Korean companies uh, innovate, uh, innovate their products, their service, and uh, serve the Indian uh, customers. Can I show the one video, YouTube video? Hello. Hello. Okay, sir. Okay. Ah. So, is it okay for me to show a video or shall I continue? Okay, okay. <coughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sure. So, I'm continuing. Okay. So, uh, now uh, we uh, check the relationship between K FDI and uh, exports. Now, my uh, next study is the complementarities of India and South Korea in ICT sector. So, uh, there is much complementarities between the two countries. I find the ICT sector is the most uh, uh, valuable sector for the corporation. So, uh, South Korea is strong in the ICT manufacturing sector. Whereas India is strong in the ICT service sector. So establishing the Korea-India partnership would be possible solution to strengthen the competitiveness of South Korean ICT firms. That's my question. Now, uh, this uh, graph on left shows how strong South Korea is in terms of ICT manufacturing. So South Korea is the third uh, largest manufacturer in the world. However, India is strong in the ICT sector. So right uh, table shows the global market is shared by India, uh, and uh, the India has a major, uh, uh, major player in the global market in the ICT service sector. So I find these two sec uh, two uh, countries can collaborate with each other, one side manufacturing, the other side uh, service sector. So due to the complementarity of 
two countries in ICT sector, two countries are most likely to get synergy in a great extent from mutual cooperation. So Korean software industry may uh, recruit talented software, software engineers from India, and the Indian software industry may uh, provide the uh, ICT engineers to South Korea manufacturing firms. That's uh, one uh, model I suggest. So there are two types of cooperation models. One is a direct expansion and a cooperative expansion. Yeah. So uh, under the direct expansion, the successful major South Korean firms establish uh, and operate R&D centers in host countries. So like uh, example is the Samsung uh, Electronics has its own R&D institute in Bangalore and recruit the Indian engineers directly. So this is the case of the direct expansion. But many SMEs cannot have enough a fund to set up its own R&D sector in, uh, in, in India. So that's why uh, the uh, Korean SMEs may have collaboration with Indian software firms or uh, with the Indian universities so that they uh, collaborate with each other and work together. That's the cooperative expansion. Yeah. So, and uh, one more thing. So I uh, discussed about the economic relations between India and South Korea. Now, I want to uh, more focus on CSR activities of Korean companies in India. So uh, let me uh, talk about the CSR activities during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in India. And, uh, during the pandemic, Korean firms uh, didn't ignore the social demand uh, from India. So they sensed uh, demand expectations and uh, they tried to do their uh, work uh, to help the uh, society of in, in India. And uh, they developed their CSR activities. Now, uh, the right side, on the right side, the graph shows the case per day. So in 2021, the case number of cases compound suddenly sold. And uh, when I uh, analyze the CSR activities of Korean firms, it uh, started with a type 1 and it evolved into type 2. So initially, according to the, uh, in terms of beneficiaries, Korean firms start to benefit insiders, maybe uh, some workers or uh, some stakeholders. But as the time went on, the CSR activities expanded to outsiders. And also, uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, Korean firms benefited one time, uh, uh, gave the one time contribution of masks, sanitizers, of personal protective equipment. But as the time went on, they gave constant devotion to strengthening medical infrastructure and human resources. So uh, initially, the Korean firms wanted to join the, the suffering of uh, Indian uh, society, but later on they develop how to do their work persistently. So complete, the CSR has become comprehensive, persistent, and strategic. Yeah, so these are the examples of Korea firms, how they benefited insiders. Now they expand the horizon of their CSR activities. Initially, they did one-time contribution, like a donation. But as the time went on, 
they establish the uh, uh, the medical uh, facility, utility facilities, and also they support the hospitals uh, with the medical infrastructure. Uh, uh, this is my conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, this study presents a uh, conceptual mm -hmm. nov novelty on how global form in the emerging market respond to uh, the demand during the pandemic crisis. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, I, till now, I talked about the history of collaboration between India and South Korea. Also, I talked about the uh, relationship between FDI and uh, trade, also CSR activities of Korean companies. So what I found was there was a trade imbalance between the two countries, and this trade imbalance has stopped these two countries from moving forward. But my suggestion is Korea and South Korea and India should proceed for the economic integration further. And there are many uh, possible areas for collaboration. For example, India has huge uh, source of human uh, resources, whereas South Korea has a technology and also a capital. So when they combine their strength with each other, they can have the win-win as uh, win-win benefits. And also, I presented a cooperation model between Korean firms and Indian engineers. And uh, I believe this cooperation should not be limited to economic cooperation, but it should proceed for the social development partnership. So like CSR activities or business innovation or government uh, support, uh, India and South Korea can work together to, uh, for the uh, social development. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kang, for your excellent presentation. And uh, uh, Dr. Kang has started with the actually started with the evolution of economic relations between India and South Korea, and he explained the trade imbalances between uh, India and South Korea, and he has uh, concluded the session. Uh, by mentioning the challenges or opportunities before India and uh, South Korea relationship. And uh, now it is time to ask questions. The participants can ask questions. And the participants are uh, uh, free to ask questions. But, uh, here, uh, Dr. Didong Kang is here to answer your questions. And participants, please ask questions. You can clear your doubts. Hi, sir. Hi. Uh, sir, thank you for your valuable time for us. And I would like to ask you a question. Could you please answer yes. me? Uh, it's a single uh, question. So, about this, could you have any input tax? Yes, we have. Uh, what are the South Korea's trade barriers? Okay, fine. So, uh, India and South Korea established the SEPA, the Free Trade Agreement. So, under the agreement, many items uh, do not have any tariffs. But still, this, uh, South Korea has uh, some trade barrier, especially to uh, export uh, Indian agricultural products to South Korea. Uh, the South Korea government should investigate uh, 
uh, the uh, quality of the agricultural uh, agricultural products. And if the Indian uh, uh, farmers get certification from South Korea, then they are allowed to export them to South Korea. But the, the certification level is a bit high. So where, although the Indian farmers try to export their products to South Korea, often they fail because they were not able to get the certification. So uh, although uh, we have the trade, uh, a free trade agreement, but still there is a trade barrier. However, uh, these days the Indian government asked Korean government to open its market for Indian labor. So there is a discussion between Korean government and Indian government. Maybe once the agreement is made, then more Indian laborers can go to South Korea and work there. So in that way, uh, two countries try to open their markets to each other. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your valuable time for us. And it's really helpful to know the uh, relation between the Indian and Korean. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Sir, you have mentioned Korean contribution in foreign trade with India. Mm -hmm. Sir, what about other side? That I mean, what about the Indian side? Did you have any data regarding why the trade imbalance is still persisting? Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Hello? Hello? Oh, okay, sir, you can continue. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the very valuable question. Yes, uh, because South Korea uh, export their products and uh, services to India. India uh, suffers from the trade deficit. That, that's true. And uh, the major uh, items of Indian exports are uh, raw materials. Basically, raw materials are the main Indian export to South Korea. Uh, and uh, one uh, reason why the India suffer from the trade deficit is the, the Korean FDI. As I mentioned in the presentation, when Korean manufacturers set their factories in India, they need uh, components. So they import components from Korean vendors, and it makes the trade deficit uh, to the side of India. So uh, that's the one reason. And uh, uh, the, as, as you say, the India wants to reduce trade deficit uh, against uh, South Korea. That's why uh, India tried to uh, some uh, pressurize the Korean uh, government to reduce the standard of certification for uh, shrimp, agricultural products, and uh, or the migration, labor migration. So we expect maybe some uh, gap between South Korea's export and import may be reduced, but it is still on the table. Hello, sir. Shall I ask sir. a question, sir? Yes, sir, please. Okay, sir. Say good evening, sir. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, the country, I mean, our country is having a number of, a large number of treaties in relation to international trade with uh, Korea and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, considering the economic conditions and all of both 
Uttar Korea and India, and what, what kind of suggestions you can put forward uh, for having more enrichment in the economy, sir? I see. Okay, thank you, sir. It's a very good question. Thank you. So, um, in in my presentation, I try to find the complementary complementary uh, sectors where India and South Korea enjoy benefit. So one sector is the ICT sector, as the South Korea is strong in manufacturing, India is strong in service, ICT service, when they work together, they, there comes a synergy. So my suggestion is trade deficit is a kind of uh, process where uh, these two countries are integrated economically. So sometimes uh, India may suffer trade deficit, but the importance is, what, what my op according to my opinion, the importance is whether India and South Korea can work together. They have some area to work together, learn together, and get a synergy. Th that is important. So my suggestion is, uh, India should now uh, focus on trade deficit, but India should have a partner uh, where uh, uh, she can hold hands with, uh, hand for the economic achievement. Let me give one example of South Korea. South Korea had a long trade deficit against the US, but they have complementarities. Uh, between India and South, and I mean the U.S. and the South Korea. So after some time, South Korea started to enjoy trade surplus. So initially, South Korea uh, was in the trade deficit against the U.S. But when these two countries continue to work together, South Korea uh, enjoyed the trade surplus against the U.S. after some time. So I believe uh, India and South Korea can be the same uh, case if they have a partnership and complementarities and enjoy produce synergies. So that's my uh, opinion, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hi, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ardra, you ask, please. Okay, ma'am. Hi, sir. I'm Ardra. Yes. Uh, are there any specific strategies or policy measures that could further enhance trade and investment between India and Korea in the coming years? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question. Yes. Uh, actually, I am working uh, with the Kotra. Kotra is the Korea Trade Investment Agency, and I often uh, give consultant, consulting service to them. What I found was it's not easy to uh, connect uh, Indian economy with Korean SMEs. So, in like uh, India, Korea SMEs are major uh, producers in, uh, in Korean economy. So Korean uh, big companies uh, can uh, be connected to uh, Indian economy, like Hyundai, Samsung, or LG. They did a good job. But how about Korean SMEs? If they fail to enter Indian economy, it's not easy to develop trade and investment between India and South Korea because they are major in the number wise. So, uh, so th there must be some strategy how the Korean SMEs can be connected to Indian, uh, Indian economy. So if we find such a uh, uh, strategy well, then yes, the trade and investment will continue to grow. But if not, then it will be stagnant. That's uh, my opinion. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I'm Rajisha. Yes. Okay, sir. Uh, I have to just ask you uh, one thing that you have mentioned about the Korean companies which is having FDA in India. Yes. Likewise, uh, I have to know that what are the Indian companies which is having FDA in Korea, major Indian companies yes. which is having FDA in India, on sorry, Korea. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, there is an imbalance uh, in terms of FDI. Uh, according to the model uh, in the, my presentation, some uh, Developed countries usually give FDI to developing countries, and developing countries provide the uh, labels or natural resources. So, uh, according to the model, uh, Korea can be the major investors uh, in India, and uh, India also may contribute uh, uh, in terms of labor or uh, the natural resources, but. So a few companies are working in South Korea. For example, uh, uh, Tata, uh, uh, what, what's the T, um, the Tata Consultancy. Tata Consultancy is working in South Korea. And uh, also a few uh, companies are working in uh, South Korea. But uh, compared to Korean FDI in India, that portion is uh, quite small. So I, but uh, my expectation is the Indian FDI will grow as Indian economy grows. I find more Indian economies go global and they are working uh, globally. And uh, until now, South, Indi South Korea was not tapped into. But South Korea also will get more Indian FDI in the future as uh, Indian MNCs go global. That's what I think. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. I'm Aditya. And my question is, what diplomatic efforts were taken by South Korea for the smooth conducting of trade negotiation with India? I see. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, in 2010, the free trade uh, agreement was established. But as you see, the trade deficit continued. So Indian government was not very happy with the uh, devising the free trade agreement. So South Korea is more active in revising the agreement, but uh, India, Indian government was a bit uh, passive in revising the uh, free trade agreement. So um, South Korea government uh, tried to do uh, some many things. For example, South Korea may provide uh, some uh, money uh, with which uh, Indian government can do some social projects. For example, uh, when uh, Korean government some give money to Indian government, Indian government can utilize it to uh, educate the entrepreneurs of Indian SMEs. So that kind of uh, giving assistance is one diplomatic uh, the, uh, the effort of South Koreans. Also. Uh, South Korean's uh, government try to have a good relationship with the Indian government. But what I found is Indian government is uh, uh, very, you know, uh, um, sometimes reluctant to revise the free trade agreement with South Korea because of a trade deficit. They are very careful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, what is the position of the Daewoo Motors? Uh, that was the first uh, automobile company from Korea uh, established in India. 
Uh, then it was uh, locked down and uh, it uh, permanently closed. What is the position now? <coughs> I think uh, Tata Motors taken over the uh, commercial vehicle uh, business at uh, Korea. I see. So actually, uh, the, I uh, do not know. You, you are talking about Dao? Dao Dao Automobiles. I see. Yes. So, <laughs> thank you. So, I, I know that the Dell automobiles were very popular when it entered the Indian market, but uh, it's very sad uh, that Dell groups uh, became bankrupt in 1998 or 1999. Uh, we had an IMF uh, the period at that time, the Dell groups, uh, the bank became bankrupt and now uh, Deo Moto uh, uh, so actually I, I do not have information on it so I, I sorry I, I don't know much about it sorry but yeah that they was one of the first Korean companies who invest in India that, that's a very important company Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I think there are no other questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, we can wind up it now, sir. Okay. I think there are no other So let us Especially thank to our guest speaker, Dr. Dedong Kang, for his extra excellent presentation. The way he uh, broke down the complex details of trade between India and South Korea was commendable. The questions asked here were right on the mark, and the uh, answers uh, of Dr. Dedong Kang was also highly informative. And uh, I want to express my gratitude to Dr. Kang for uh, giving clear and detailed answers. Thank you all for being a part of this valuable conversation. And uh, I look forward to more engaging session in the future. Uh, take care and, uh, I, uh, and have a great day. Over to Adra. As we are nearing to the conclusion of our program, I invite Dr. Rajeshati to make a closure with a word of thanks. Thank you, Atra. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Honorable Resource Person, Dr. Jetong Kyang, Respected Principal, uh, Dr. Suji CP, IQAC Coordinator, Dr. Ch uh, Sirimati Chandini PM, uh, Dr. Shaji Maram Vittil, Dr. Sandhya Pipilai, uh, our webinar coordinator, Dr. Bhavya, uh, Bhavya B, our teachers and our enthusiastic participants. I am honored to get an opportunity to express my uh, gratitude on behalf of PG Department of Commerce. Today, uh, we have extremely fortunate to have the Dr. Jetong Kyang as our resource person. Uh, the tack on trade, investment and participation between India and South Korea current issues and the way forward. Uh, it was just, uh, it was actually unfolded the current state of affairs and envisioned the future collaborations of foreign trade of India and South Korea. Uh, it was highly informative, sir, insightful and interesting effort. So on behalf of PG Department of Commerce, uh, I express uh, my sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Our speaker, Dr. Chetong Kang. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, being a part of this webinar. Thank you for inviting me, ma'am. 
Okay, sir. And I extend uh, my gratitude to our principal, Dr. Sujay CP, uh, who is rendering the constant support for this webinar series. Thank you, sir. I also express sincere gratitude to our AQAC coordinator, Srimadhi Chandani PM. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the Vibrant Chair of our uh, today's session, uh, Dr. Shaji Varamvitil, Head and uh, Associate Professor of Department of Commerce. Uh, sir, thank you, sir, so for making the chair chair of the session wonderful. Uh, Dr. Sandhya Pippalai, Associate Professor, PG Department of Commerce, who is the energy behind the realization of this session. I convey my gratitude to you, ma'am. I inducted to you Dr. Bhavya B, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of Physics and the Coordinator of uh, Guru Vajan 2023 uh, for your constant support. Thank you, ma'am. And I express my grateful thanks to Ms. Uh, Ardra who uh, made anchoring to this session. Thank you, Ardra. And I also express uh, my thanks to all the participants uh, who have been participating actively in this session. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much Again. for inviting me. Sir. Okay, sir. We can have to mind up, sir. Good. Being part of Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all. So now we can conclude the session. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you. Thank you, sir.